Hey guys, welcome to my second Girl Talk episode where I answer some pretty personal questions from you guys. By the way, this series or episode is not exclusively for girls, it's just you know, the name of it. Anyone can watch this video as long as you're interested in the topics I cover. Today, we're gonna be talking about money. Money, money, money. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the kitchen. But first, let me just quickly apologize for why this video took so long. I know for my first episode, a lot of you guys uh, responded really positively, really appreciated all your feedback. And I know a lot of you guys were kind of like waiting for these like finance money talk. It did take a while, but we're here. I am filming this. If you guys want to see like monthly girl talk videos or even like bi-weekly ones, please let me know below so I can prioritize it on my list of things to film. In today's episode, I'm doing a giveaway as promised. I'm always going to include a giveaway for these type of videos. I put together a little care package with some of my favorite products. We've got some skincare, we've got some Fenty Beauty, we've got some Korean skincare, some petite cosmetic lashes, of course, and a bunch of other goodies in here. And so I'm going to be giving this away to one lucky winner. All you have to do is answer one question that I'll let you know later throughout the video and um, I will pick a winner from there. Now, money can be a sensitive topic for some and I totally get it, but it's something that affects all of us, especially in a time like this with COVID and everything, like lots of businesses are suffering, people have been losing their jobs or just like, you know, income has been cut. So I know a lot of people are exploring other like career options or other ways to make money, maybe even like online. Maybe you've been thinking about, you know, should you pursue YouTube, start your own channel or try to like monetize off your online platforms. Either way, if you're feeling a little bit stuck or if you're curious as to how I make money online, I hope that by me sharing and answering your questions, it kind of sheds a bit more light on this, you know, online platform and this online money making world. Also, it might inspire you and kind of help you with your like financial decisions in the future. Okay, make sure you grab your coffees, your teas, your vodkas, whatever your choice of beverage may be. I'm not judging. Um, just sit back and relax because we've got like a couple of, we've got a lot of questions, let's just say, that I'm gonna go through today. So, you know, if you're busy, maybe you can pop this video in the background and listen to it as a podcast. Even play it on two speed, whatever you like. Let's start off with the most popular question that you guys have submitted. Um, a lot of you guys have asked and you know, I know you've been wondering how much I make on YouTube. So let's get that question out of the way first. Almost everyone that I meet that find out I do YouTube for a living, you know, they end up asking me this question. It's quite common and I don't think it's rude at all because, you know, I was once really curious about how people make money online and YouTube and how much YouTube pays and all this stuff. So I totally get it. By the way, guys, in case you hear like kids playing in the background, uh, it's just my neighbors and stuff. So excuse them. <laughs> Now, unlike other careers where you can kind of just search online and know what sort of salary bracket you can expect from different career paths, YouTube's very different because there's lots of variables that come into play when it comes to how much AdSense money you're making. For example, if you're considering maybe becoming a teacher, your starting salary might be like 45K to 50K a year, whereas doctors, they'll earn more, so something around 150K to 200K a year, something along those lines. But when it comes to YouTube, it's very, very different. A lot of variables come into play on how much you can earn, such as what type of topics you're gonna to cover, um, where your audience is watching from, how long they're watching, what your views are like. So there's just like a lot of variables that come into play when it comes to making money on YouTube. Okay, I feel like the easiest way for me to explain is just to show you guys the back end of YouTube and show you guys my analytics. By the way, by me showing you this information, I'm not showing off or bragging by any means. I'm just showing you this because I know a lot of you guys are curious and this is going to help someone out there because, you know, maybe you've been considering 
starting a channel for a while but you kind of don't know and don't know what to expect the pay to be like so I'm gonna show you these but keep in mind it's it's very different for everyone okay so here I have the analytics showing me what my estimated revenue is for the week so here it says eight hundred and ninety four dollars and five cents that's based on about four hundred thousand views this number definitely fluctuates it really depends on how often I'm uploading that week and obviously how those videos are performing. Here's my monthly revenue. So it's about $10,210 this month, estimated for the last 28 days to be exact. And on the far right here, you can see the playback base CPM and it's $7.57, which means that's how much I get paid per thousand views. So I know sometimes people think that the more subscribers you have, the more you make, but actually it's the views that, that actually pay you because the more time people view your videos, the more ads they view and that sort of goes up. And now this CPM is set by YouTube. It goes up and down and depends on where your audience is watching from. So for example, if you have a lot of people watching from the US and there's lots of advertisers um, from there, advertising on YouTube and Google, then your CPM is gonna be higher for those countries as opposed to say somewhere like India where people might not be spending that much on YouTube. So it changes all the time. Here you can see the monthly estimated revenue for my channel from the last six months. And so the best month that I had was in May where I made $15,255.55. And then it kind of drops a little bit in June, July, August, and then like it just kind of goes up and down. But to give you an average sort of um, view, it's probably around 10 to 15,000 that I make on AdSense um, a month from my channel. On the right here, you can see that which video performed the best during the last 28 days. And it's my blackhead vacuum suction video that made about $1,000 for me. So this number is purely off just AdSense revenue. I also make money from brand sponsorships, um, affiliate links, selling my own products such as um, my lashes from Petit Cosmetics or bags and jewelry cases from Mark and Scribe. Also in the future, I'm opening up a makeup and nail studio and I'll be running some workshops. So that will be another stream of revenue for me. Now let me know if you want to see a more in-depth video on my different streams of revenue because I really like to diversify. I think it's really important. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the other things I do, you can like let me know below and then I'll be sure to create like a more in-depth dedicated video for that because that in itself is a whole other topic. Oh, another thing I want to mention is that I have been on YouTube since 2013. So like seven years on the platform and the first like year or two I guess I didn't make money it was just like a hobby for me and you know slowly but surely my channel picked up and grew and I think like you know a big factor was me being consistent with my content uploading weekly and also having like a niche my channel is mainly like beauty and makeup, especially when I first started, right? And it also helped that I started a series. So Tina tries it and you know, you guys know what to expect when you watch that. There's like a, like a bit of a format there. And I feel like having something like that really helped uh, drive the growth on my channel. So if you're thinking of starting a channel, please just know that it does take time to earn money. It definitely doesn't happen overnight. If it does for you, you're super, super lucky, but I think nowadays it's a lot harder as well. Um, YouTube has changed a lot and it continues to change. And so I guess like you have to be really passionate about the topics or the type of videos you're making to be able to, to maintain longevity and just to kind of keep you going and keep you motivated. Do you and Alfred have a shared account? How do you split your expenses? So in case you guys didn't know, Alfred and I, we work together. He does most of like the finance side of my businesses. He also manages my schedules and brand deals. So he's like the guy that does all the stuff that I don't wanna do or I'm not really good at. And I'm more of the creative and I focus on content and doing things that I like. 
And so I feel like we're this like working team. So when it comes to our expenses, actually we don't have a shared account, but we own our company and business together. Um, but in saying that when it comes to expenses, we kind of just split it. You know, I actually don't really calculate who pays for what, because at the end of the day, I feel like it's our money, you know, it's our business. And so that's how we kind of, you know, manage our finances. Well, actually Alfred really manages everything. I'm just like the person that comes up with all these ideas and kind of just goes with the flow creates content, creates these or all these like business ideas and ventures and he just makes the finance side happen and he manages all of that. In the beginning though, obviously before we started working together, we had separate accounts and we kind of just split the bill here and there, you know, if we went out to dinner, he would, you know, get the bill one time and then I would kind of take turns and that's how we kind of worked. <laughs> What do you spend your money on? Mainly I spend my money on rent. That is like a huge chunk of my income. And then food, clothes, um, paying my editor, like other business expenses. And like I said, I'm gonna be opening up a makeup and um, nail studio. So a lot of my savings have been going to, you know, fix, fitting out that place, the renting and the bond and everything. So a lot of my money is going to that. What else? Um, car repayments every month, utilities and biscuits. <laughs> I spent a lot of money on biscuit actually. But you know what, overall, I am probably a big saver. If you speak to Alfred, he'll, he'll tell you that I'm a serial saver. It's really hard for me to part with my money and I'm really conscious of like what I'm spending on. Um, I don't really splurge on luxury things. I think the only thing that we really spend on is travel, but obviously now we can't travel. So that's just going to our savings. What do you invest in? So when it comes to investments, I feel like I mainly like to invest in myself, my education and like upskilling and like I love doing courses. I recently did a nail course. So I like to invest my money in education as well as my businesses. Um, a lot of the time the profits all go back into the business. So I don't really draw an income from those like my brands just yet. I just kind of put it all back to help grow that brand. I also invest my money in property. Alfred and I, we bought an apartment in Sydney as an investment property together. Alfred actively invests in like the stock markets and um, I guess private equity. I'm not like well versed in that. I just kind of like leave that up to him. That's his forte. What was your view on money when you were younger versus now? So growing up, I did not come from a well-off family. In fact, you know, my parents were both immigrants from Vietnam and like many immigrants, you know, they fleed their country to seek better life elsewhere and they ended up in Australia. So they literally had to start from the ground up. They didn't speak English. They, did, they didn't have any like particular set of skills that could, they could easily go get a job in. And so they had to resort to working long hours in like factories and labor jobs to, you know, look after my two brothers and I. So growing up, money was really scarce and we lived in like the cheaper neighborhoods which meant there was like more crime i remember our house would get broken into quite often it was just very unsafe growing up and also like we would wait until council days where people would throw out their old furniture and those were the days that we would get our new furniture you know my dad would actually drive his like car out and try to pick up all these i guess people's old furniture and that would be like how we furnished our house also growing up, I did see my parents fight a lot over money. I guess it was just like such a hard time for both of them. You know, they're trying to feed three kids, they're in this new country. And so they would actually have a lot of like quarrels when it comes to like, you know, their relationship. And unfortunately, as a kid, I saw that a lot growing up. And so my view on money was that I knew we didn't have much of it. And I knew it was really hard to get because I hardly saw my parents. They worked really long hours and I just knew that if I wanted a better life for my family and I, or for my future, we needed money to get there. So when I did get a little bit older and I was old enough to work, I just pretty much did anything that I could that you know would earn me money, even if I, I hated those jobs, you know what I mean? I would kind of like stick it out 
and just do it for the money. I didn't think that you could have a job that you liked and still earn money. That was that was pretty much my view. Now that I'm older, I still view money as important because after all, we need it to you know all survive. And so money is still important, but now I also really value my time because at the end of the day, no matter how much money you make, you can never buy time back. So I felt like, you know, if I was stuck in a job that I hated, but it did earn me like a good salary, maybe that's not worth it because I would like work all these long hours, be miserable just to get this paycheck. And what can I do with that paycheck? You know, I can't magically buy that time back. And so I really valued like how I spent my time and I tried to make my passions or turn my passions into income. And like, you know, I'm glad that YouTube happened and I was able to do that, but I didn't think that was possible when I was younger. At what age did you start saving? I started saving as soon as I started working. So in Australia, you can start working at 14 and nine months. And my first job was at Payless Shoes in retail and that's when i started saving because my parents stopped giving me allowance so if i wanted something i needed to save up for it and that was really good because that kind of instilled in me and it made me realize the value of money so i was really careful with how i spent it were you ever afraid of not finding your dream job or being stuck in a boring job Yes, 100%. I've worked in jobs that I have absolutely hated or I found boring and just so mundane or just like, I just was not feeling any passion. You know when you wake up and you just dread going to work and you're like, should I call in sick? And then your head is like full of like excuses that you can make up and then you end up going to work miserable anyway. That was me. <laughs> and for the longest time, I didn't know what my dream job would be. Like I didn't know what my passion was. I was kind of just like bouncing around doing all these like odd random jobs and never really like sticking with one. Um, my biggest fear was not being able to find that one thing that I was supposed to stick with for like 10, 20 years because that's what I saw around me. People they studied and then stuck with their job for a majority of their lives. And I just felt like I, I couldn't find that thing, you know, and I was so frustrated with myself because I kept doing all these different courses and then I didn't really stick with the, the career path that I thought would, you know, be appealing to me. And for the longest time, I just thought, oh my God, I felt like a failure. But thankfully, you know, things all worked out. And it's funny because all the things that I studied, I didn't stick with just those one job, but I kind of combined all of them and my skills that I learned over the years to, to what I have today. So, you know, if you ever feel a little bit lost or, you know, you you finish studying a course and you're like, actually, maybe I don't want to pursue a career in this. Don't feel like you failed because at least you're still trying to find it. Like keep moving to the next thing, you know, keep trying different things. Because if I just stopped there, I, you know, I don't think I would have have found, you know, YouTube and have started all these businesses and have the lifestyle that I have today. How do I figure out what career path to take? This is a super tough question because it's definitely different for everyone. You know, some people when they're younger, they just know what they want to be when they grow up. And then there's others who was like me, like that had no idea and kind of fell into it. So I feel like my biggest tip would be to make a list of things that you actually enjoy or you're good at and kind of rank them from highest to lowest and then kind of go through that list and figure out like how you can get a taste of that career or be in that industry whether it be like work experience talking to someone watching like videos online do as much research as you can and it's best to be hands-on with it and try to get some experience so you can try it out before you actually commit years and years of like study to it. And if that thing on your list doesn't work out, move on to the next one and the next one. Like I said, don't give up, just keep trying different things and you know, nowadays it's very, very different to, you know, 10 years ago. Nowadays there's so many other ways you can make money. You can monetize off your passions. If you're an artist, maybe back then you'd have to like go through a different path. Whereas now there's social media and you can actually market yourself and it's completely free. Should I go for interest or higher income when it comes to career choice? Again, this one's really difficult because it's kind of like, up to you, what do you value more? I can't give you like a 
a definite answer to this because everyone is different. You know, younger me, I would have definitely chosen the high paying job because growing up, I just really thought that money, money, money was really important. And it's okay if you hated your job, just stick it out because you have money. Uh, whereas as I got older, I realized that, you know, it wasn't worth the emotional and mental drain and the toll it took on my body you know i ended up being like really miserable and i kind of really dreaded going to work i kind of hated life and at the end of the day what for for a paycheck but then you know what are you going to do with that i feel like the old me i was just living for the weekends whereas now like my job has become my lifestyle and i love it i'm living the dream because i can do what i want and still make a living and I didn't think that was possible. So I feel like it's kind of up to you, but know that you can kind of have both. Like, Don't think that it's one or the other that you have to choose. It just might take a little bit longer to get both, you know? So if you have any interest in something that you feel like, oh, generally people don't make a lot of money in that, but you know, I really like it. Should I pursue it or pick this higher paying job that I don't really like? If it was up to me, I would definitely choose the thing that I'm interested in and then figure out ways to make money after I get good at it. So make sure you don't feel like you have to choose one or the other. These days it's possible to have both. How do you manage so many businesses? I'm really lucky that I have the people around me that I can rely on, that I can trust. So Alfred, he does the back end work for a lot of the businesses. And then I've got family in Australia that help me with like sending out orders and petite cosmetics, like my parents, my brothers help me. So I'm really lucky and thankful that I have a supportive like team around me. Without them, I honestly wouldn't be able to juggle so many things. Also, I feel like because I have an amazing editor now, I'm able to have more time to work on other passion projects like uh, opening my makeup and nail studio. Were you ever close to quitting YouTube? I would be lying if I said no. I feel like it's quite common for people that have been on this platform for so long to question and kind of think about, you know, is it time to leave YouTube? If you guys remember, I did have a mental breakdown on my channel a few years back. Oh, I was just in a bad place then where I was getting all this anxiety, suffering from like depression and YouTube was no longer a platform that I used for like, ex for escaping my everyday troubles. That's how it kind of started for me. Like YouTube was this passion thing that I can just pour my energy into and not think about what's happening in the outside world. And it would be like my passion project, which turned into a career. And I really enjoyed it for a while, but then I got into this dark space where it kind of consumed my life and I was chasing the numbers and views so much. And I don't know, I guess like I kind of burnt out to be honest. And at that point was when I was like considering, should I leave YouTube? Thank God I didn't. I felt like I just needed to reset. I needed to take a break and diversify my content. I really wanted to start doing other types of videos, which you guys probably would notice now, like I'm doing more crafty videos. I'm doing videos like this. I'm not just focused on makeup and beauty purely. Whereas before I felt like, oh, I started as a makeup channel, a beauty channel. If I make other content, people won't watch. And it was just a narrative that I told myself and it consumed me and I felt really restricted. But honestly, it was just my thoughts, you know, and because I took a break and I was able to kind of just focus on my mental health and start doing the things that I loved, it kind of put me back on track. But yeah, to answer that question, I did think about it. I'm not gonna be quitting YouTube anytime in the future. I feel like I'm in a really good uh, place at the moment. So I hope that my channel will be able to grow with me, especially later on when I have a family. You know, I hope you guys will stick around to watch. Did you have any friends or family who didn't agree with your career choice? My family, they were completely like okay with it. If anything, my parents just didn't really understand how anyone could make money online. It obviously wasn't like a normal career choice, especially when you're looking at it as an Asian parent, you know, you think, you know, being a lawyer or an accountant, that's just a stable job and that's a normal job. Whereas nowadays it's very different. So I feel like they just didn't understand, but they weren't against it. 
The only person that didn't really agree or kind of like doubt my decision was my ex-husband. He didn't really think that I could have a, a successful, high paying job or career doing makeup and YouTube. And so, you know, obviously we didn't work out, but you know, I'm kind of thankful that he felt that way and that helped fuel my, like my passion even more, my want and desire to really make it and be successful just to kind of like prove him wrong, you know what I mean? So I kind of turned that negativity into something positive that can fuel and keep me going, especially when, you know, I felt like giving up. So if you guys are going through something like that where a family member doesn't agree or, you know, your friends don't understand, don't give up, you know, repackage that negativity and use it as fuel to to keep you going because you're going to need to dig deep and find out why how you're going to do it you know just don't give up and don't let other people's views and doubts affect you because as long as you believe in yourself you can literally accomplish anything do you see yourself working a nine to five job i feel like i work more than nine to five i think that's the thing like I own my own business or businesses and so I'm always thinking about work even if I'm not like filming or answering emails or doing physical work I'm thinking about work so I don't think I would ever go back to like a nine to five job I guess like maybe you guys mean like go work for someone like an office job I don't think I could do that just because I've had a taste of this entrepreneur life and I just know it's a lifestyle for me. I like dictating my schedule. I like making decisions based on, you know, the things that I like. And I love creating content for you guys. And it's something that I enjoy. I don't want to give that up. So yeah, I don't really see myself working a nine to five job for someone else because, you know, I'm happy where I am. Did you take out loans to start your businesses, boutique cosmetics or mark and scribe? No, I didn't take out any loans. So these two businesses are self-funded and that's why I started off small. I didn't want to, you know, take out a, a hefty loan to start this huge brand and then be in debt and kind of feel like I'm in this vicious cycle where I, I really need to push sales and make money. I just knew I didn't want to be in that position. I felt like for me, I just needed to start small. I needed to do most of it myself. I need to just learn the ropes and um, I didn't want to be in debt at all. Also with Petite Cosmetics, it's pretty much like a family business because it helps pay my my family and it all goes back in and so i really love that i was able to create like jobs and my parents are able to help me out because you know they don't have a specific skill set and it's really hard for them to find work out outside and they are getting older now so you know i really appreciate whenever you guys buy from my brand petite cosmetics you know you guys actually you know helping my family out now with mark and scribe it's a joint partnership with a friend of mine and so Again, we just put our money in and started the brand. We took no loans out and it's just purely like a self startup business. What are you currently saving for? So Alpha and I have a big goal of owning our own home in Australia and we want to be mortgage free. And so we're working really hard. We're saving for that as well as I'm saving for a lifestyle where I can just do the things that I love and not be worried about just making money from it. For example, you know, I love doing like nail art. So I want to be able to do the hobbies that I like, but still, you know, have a roof over my head. I don't want um, to sort of have that worry in the back of my mind about always making money. And so I'm saving for that. My goal in life is to just do what I love for as long as I can and, you know, have money just stem from that but not be so focused on just earning money i feel like what i do with my time is super important so i just want to do the things that i enjoy in life okay for this next question i'm going to be choosing it for the giveaway so make sure you answer this what did you want to be when you were younger versus what did you end up doing now when i was younger i wanted to be an art teacher or a comedian i don't know where the comedian side came from i feel like you know when i was Younger, I loved making my friends laugh, so I really enjoyed that. And I just thought, you know, it'd be so good if I had a job that really entertained and just made people laugh all day. I also really enjoyed art, and I, I thought that, you know, I loved 
doing art. I'd love to be an art teacher. I could do that all the time. And I feel like I, I kind of do that today with makeup and, you know, beauty and stuff. I'm, I'm teaching you guys, doing tutorials, and it's, you know, makeup is art, as well as nails. Nail art, I love nail art. And obviously you guys knew where I ended up today. So let me know guys, answer the question, what did you want to be when you were younger versus what did you end up doing now? I'd be really interested to see how many of you guys actually became what you wanted when you were younger. What are some of your best money saving tips? Okay, I feel like one tip that has really helped me a lot and sort of changed my view on how I spend my money is that before I make a purchase, especially like a large ticket item, instead of just looking at how much it costs, I try to calculate how long I have to work to buy that thing. So for example, say you want to buy the latest iPhone and it's $2,000, instead of just saying, okay, well, it's $2,000, work out how long it takes you to earn $2,000, say it takes you a whole month, and then ask yourself, is this new iPhone worth me working one whole month to earn? A lot of the times when I do that, I feel like it's probably not worth it because you know I especially value my time. I feel like you know maybe I can spend it on something else that maybe will help me make more money in the future instead of just splurging. And so that really helped me and it's kind of like, you know, stopped me from impulse buying. Also, another great tip is I always think about it's not how much money you make, it's how much you save and what you do with that saving. For the longest time, I was the biggest saver. Like, like I said, Alfred will tell you I'm a serial saver. Before I met him, I was just used to saving my money. I wasn't investing. I wasn't making my money work for me. And, you know, it was obviously better than not saving, but when you consider inflation in you know in the future i was actually at a loss because my money wasn't growing it was just sitting there and so when alpha came on board you know he really um taught me the importance of investing and so i feel like that was really important that's a really good tip because if you want to build wealth it's very long term and you want to be smart with your money saving it alone in your account is probably not enough and for me, because I didn't know any better, I just thought that was the best thing. <laughs> Which leads me to my next tip. I think it's really important for us to just like educate ourselves when it comes to finance. I know finance can kind of be like really boring and dry, but I feel like if you take the time to learn a little bit and kind of plan, maybe visualize what you want in the future, what that's gonna look like, how much is that going to cost and sort of work backwards and figure out, okay, you know, when do I want to retire? How much do I want saved up? Um, what sort of investments can I look at? Or am I comfortable um, investing or looking at? I think it's really important for you guys to just invest in yourself as well as just learning about finance. Even just the basic stuff is going to help you. And there's so much resources online. You know, I feel like, there's so many channels out there as well. Patricia Bright is really good. She's got her own channel. She makes it really easy to understand so you guys can check out her channel. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to answer for today. I hope that I was able to, you know, shed some more light when it comes to like YouTube and money and finances and my experience and how I spend my money. If you guys have more questions or if you have requests for topics to cover in this Girl Talk series, please let me know below. Also, don't forget to enter the giveaway. I'll leave all the details for you guys in the description box. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And yeah, that's it from me, guys. I shall speak to you guys next time. Bye.